So we're going to talk about the basics first. In truth, 3A standards and accepted practices do not convey an automatic suitability for CIP cleaning methods. There are only one or two standards that speak specifically to CIP cleaning, one being silo tanks, the other being there are certain uh, flow meters, uh, your Coriolis type of flow meters, uh, your mass, mass uh, flow meters that are CIPable, uh, certain uh, tubular heat exchangers are considered as CIPable, but in general, the vast majority of all 3A standards are written to accommodate both mechanical or CIP cleaning and manual cleaning. So be sure to keep in mind that just because it bears a symbol, and even though your plant that you're inspecting, the plant manager may assume that he bought, well, I bought a 3A symbol piece of equipment, obviously it must be CIPable. That's not generally the case. Uh, it's important to keep fresh in your mind the difference between the terminology should and shall. Should is optional. It's an optional requirement. They don't have to do it. Generally, should is used only in the appendix sections of the documents which are considered as informational uh, information for any of the stakeholder groups, inspection groups that you might want. The body of the standards will always use shall, and these are requirements. You must follow these criteria, whether you're the fabricator or the user, uh, and users are, are very quick to modify equipment, but they're still governed by the standards. Uh, the standards are written under a hierarchy of paragraphs. When you're reading through the sections, you have to keep in mind where is a particular criteria or requirement in relation to the paragraphs above it. There are reference documents that are either in some of the old standards referenced right specifically in the paragraphs and criteria. Our new format of uh, putting together documents has all the normative references in the front of the document. If it's a normative reference, it is part of the standard. A normative reference, let's say you have a silo tank, and one of the normative references is the personal access port for the doorway into the uh, uh, silo tank. Those criteria for the personal access port standard take precedence over the main standard for that individual component. But that's all it applies to. We try not to put in any references that aren't applicable to a particular standard. So they all should be in there. And finally, as I said, most standards and accepted practices also have a appendix section or a series of appendix sections generally to provide background information or informative information to help explain uh, what's expected of some of the parts in the main body of the standard. So what is a 3A sanitary standard? 3A sanitary standards are specific criteria for a, the design, the fabrication of a specific type of equipment. So you'll have a standard for a farm bulk tank. You'll have a standard for a silo tank. You have standards for pumps. You have standards for instrument sensors. So they're for a very specific type of equipment. And all of them that come in contact with food. Some of these examples are groups of types of equipment that come under the headings of, of standards or vessels. And there may be three or four separate standards for vessels. Again, silo tanks, farm bulk tanks, processing vessels, storage tanks uninsulated tanks. There's a whole variety of vessels. There's a variety of fillers that come under the fillers standard. There's a standard for your general milk fillers. There's a standard for viscous product fillers. There's a standard for dry products fillers. They're discrete and separate documents. And this goes for all of these various 
categories of the types of equipment that 3A is developing standards for. And essentially, these groupings are also the same groupings that we have our standards writers grouped into for our working groups. An accepted practice is a set of criteria that also covers the design, fabrication, and installation of systems. So these are not specific to one type of, of equipment, but they are for systems. Spray drying systems is a good example. You may have any number of different pieces of equipment in a spray drying system that are all put together for the purpose of drying uh, milk products. The equipment in a 3A accepted practice system does not have to bear the 3A symbol. It does not necessarily have to have a 3A standard for it. A good example, again, using the uh, spray dryer practice is uh, rotary airlocks. Very important component in a spray drying system to get product out of a bag collector or out of a cyclonic collector. There's no 3A sanitary standard for a rotary airlock. But the provisions of the practice provide for all of the necessary criteria for you to evaluate that particular piece of equipment. So surface finishes, radiuses, gasket placement, all of this type of information is included in the accepted practices for non-standardized equipment. Two of the uh, practices that you folks probably come into quite commonly are the culinary steam practice and the air under pressure practice. Air under pressure is commonly used for air agitation of tanks and silos. Uh, culinary steam is used for any number of different uh, heating applications within uh, a dairy processing operation. So when you look at either of those two standards, the vast majority of components are not covered by a 3A sanitary standard. But they are covered by the practice. There's clear and discrete guidelines of what are appropriate. Some of the 3A accepted practices that are in place uh, are process and cleaning systems. We have the HDSD and HHSD pasteurizer systems uh, accepted practice, uh, which has very heavy involvement by Milk Safety Branch in its preparation. Uh, permanently installed product solution pipelines and cleaning systems, another system that you come into almost daily contact in your operations and your, your inspection work. Uh, we are developing one of the newer ones is the uh, CIP standard for equipment, large vessels. Considerably different than, than the uh, cleaning systems for pipelines. Pipelines are relatively easy to clean if you follow certain parameters of getting your flow up, your solution temperatures and concentrations right, and you keep the, the pipelines full so there's no air pockets, pockets and things of that nature. When it comes to cleaning a uh, CIP-able bag house, which is one of the newer uh, innovations in the drying industry, it gets to be quite an exercise of making sure that the bag house and the bags can be cleaned in place. So these, these can be very comprehensive this is a very comprehensive document. Uh, the ESL and uh, ultra pasteurized practice is another one you may come in contact with. And the, the bottom two, steam of culinary quality and uh, air under pressure are two that Lyle will be talking about a little bit later. This is the diagram for culinary steam system. You will note that the three accepted practice diagram is exactly the same as the one in your PMO. The 3A works very, very closely with, with you folks and your representatives on, on the committees. The same with uh, air under pressure. I believe this diagram as well is, is in the PMO. So the, 3A is not new or different or strange requirements. These are things that 
you have learned over the years, you've used over the years, but they're very useful documents for you when evaluating specific types of equipment. Why is 3A equipment desirable? Why is it something you as an inspector can find useful? Is it standardized? Obviously, it's a 3A standard. Equipment that meets the standard, regardless of where in the world it is made, is expected to meet this standard, whether it bears the symbol or not. The symbol is an optional feature, but when I was at USDA in the Dairy Inspection and Grading Branch, our regulations basically required us that if there was a 3A sanitary standard or accepted practice in effect, that became our baseline inspection criteria. Your PMO has a cross-reference. Essentially, it doesn't state it quite that bluntly, but it does state that, that the, if it meets a 3A standard, it also meets the requirements of the PMO. The, the advantage is that if a pump is seen in California or a pump is inspected in Virginia or North Carolina, it is evaluated according to a standardized set of criteria. The criteria are recognized for assuring public health because FDA, USDA, state regulatory sanitarians are involved in the writing of the standards. Everybody's view is heard, it's discussed, and as it works through the consensus process, everything is there. And assuring the public health is obviously your primary goal and mission, it's also 3A's primary goal and mission, that we want to make sure that the equipment is designed so that it isn't the source of public health concerns. There's a section in the, the standards that identifies what are acceptable materials for use. This is helpful so that strange things don't start coming in, that you don't start running into copper, copper kettles for cheese vats, which the Swiss industry very dearly loves to use. Uh, but you get into what is acceptable for use, what types of metals can be done, uh, corrosion resistance, cleanability, all of these types of things. They are nationally and internationally recognized standards. As you look through any of the processing plants you go into, just stop and look at how many pieces of equipment in the dairy industry in the United States come from Europe, come from Australia, come from New Zealand. So they are nationally and internationally recognized. Uh, 3A can be a source of technical information, uh, things like we're doing today, of trying to impart some of the technical information that we've accumulated over the years. But even when you get into new pieces of equipment, uh, 3A can be a source of information of why are these components important, why is this uh, important, what are our specific cleaning methods. So, we do have on our website a technical resources section that is accessible to anybody on, on certain technical aspects of the standards and accepted practices. And if the piece of equipment bears a symbol, then you can be assured that it has now gone through the TPV or third party verification program. And this means it's not just the fabricator that's saying, oh yeah, this piece of equipment meets. We did everything we were supposed to do. Or some super salesman is out there saying, oh yeah, you can CIP this equipment, no problem. The bearing the symbol means that the TPV or the CCE has looked at it independent of the fabricator and said, yes, it does conform to the standards. There really is substance behind the symbol, that there really is somebody out there assisting you in looking at this equipment so that you don't necessarily have to be a technical expert on everything from membrane systems to sensors to uh, spray dryers if you're into grade A powder or whatever it is. That